Okay, we'll call the meeting the order here. First thing on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Move to approve. Second. And second. And with that, we'll go into employee recognition here. We've got a few people here I see that are. Start off with our 15-year one, Amy. Uh, uh, 15 years in, if I can find one here. There. He's got 15 years in with, uh, with our assessor's office. Uh, says percentage and grateful recognition of 15 years of outstanding dedicated service to Clay County and its citizens. I have to do the price of writing you want to introduce your family or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy and Tracy. Yeah. <laughs> Nancy, got any words you want to talk about? I just would like to thank her for her years of experience that uh, she's given to our department. It makes things go cool smoothly and I'm looking for another 15 years. Very good. <laughs> thank you very much for being here. Thank you. And I heard Ken Severson is. Not it's not be, working. Still working? Oh my God. <laughs> Bruce has gone this week, so uh, it's pulling double duty. <laughs> okay, Charles Sweckwell has got 15 years. Uh, Justin, you're going to take that to him for I guess. I will, yes. And express our appreciation for the Absolutely. Yes. Thank yes. you very much. Okay. Now we'll go with our 30 year. Tammy? And again, the same wording there. We appreciate your 30 years. And yes, say. On behalf of Clay County, our Ron Porter in 74, and uh, Tammy's done a fantastic job in our collections department and continues to do a great job. Well, for 30 years, you must have been able to do it. Thank you. <laughs> we have Lori. And Lori's got 35 years in. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must be a typo. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, she is one of our lead workers over the intermediates unit and does a fantastic job of um, the adult programs and handling all the deal. The adult workers. Oh, very thank much you. appreciate what she does. Okay, well, thank you for those words, Larry. And, uh, and thank you so much for sticking with us, too. Well, thank you. Well, how many times you can go? They really must like it here. Thank you. 35 yeah, years. How many? Do we have many more with over 35 years in this? It's not many. Awesome. Uh, okay. We were shooting for Vicky on 35. <laughs> Okay, with that, citizens to be heard. I don't see any citizens to be heard here. Next thing we'll have approval of the minutes from the June 21st to 28 meetings. I have a motion to approve the minutes. Do I have a second? Uh, I didn't get my packet, I so I just got my packet as well. I haven't even had a chance to read it, so my mail didn't show up yet. Can we uh, can we just approve them next week or? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll table this uh, approval of the minutes. Movement of bills and vouchers. Some move approval. Or second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passed. Dave, uh, adopt funding the resolution and agreement for the bridge replacement project. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon. <laughs> uh, we've just got one item today, and it is a funding resolution, and it's also a funding agreement put together by MnDOT. Uh, something that they, I think some of you board members have remembered over the years. It's, well, it used to be just the resolution, now they've had the agreement part. It's about, is it like 15 pages or so? 22. 22 pages, so it's uh, 
It's got a lot, a lot more legal language in there, but for the most part, this is for the use of the bridge bond funds in our specific project is on County Road 117 in the city of Glendon. Uh, this was a project that um, I think the state was really nice uh, as, far, as far as the state aid department in funding this pro project because you know, you all are aware there is no bridge bonding that was passed. There's no bonding bill, uh, but they did find some just under $100,000 for our project. So it was very much appreciated so we could get this project completed and move forward and get ready for our, uh, our grade and pave in 2018. So Is that going to affect the other, th do we have three more projects there? We've got three other ones at the same time. That was all town bridge funds. Oh, okay. Yep, so that, that they don't have the same type of agreement. It's a much easier pass through of funds. We get dedicated town bridge funds from the gas tax dollars and then we spend those as the projects become eligible. Uh, this bridge bonding is on a, on a request, kind of a need basis. So it's a little different on how you get the funds and how they're passed through. But okay. I mean, if Eric wants to kind of read through a little bit on the, the amount of the agreement itself. Yeah, so like Dave said, uh, more or less it's 22 pages here and it's just saying that, you know, we have the agreed grant amount, which is uh, 117,000 dollars uh, roughly and any expense that goes above or beyond that the county would have to put the bill basically that's where they draw their line so that's kind of the agreement in a nutshell um, yeah and this again is for the, the bid opening we did on june 21st uh gladen construction was the low bidder um and it's the box culvert and glidden in there which they hope to start on construction uh beginning of august Okay. Do you read the, the exact grant amount? Yep. The exact grant amount is uh, $117,786.50. And uh, we would request that we approve the funding resolution and the local bridge replacement program grant agreement, uh, 100 Is that going right through Glendon, the, the main yeah. drive? Right in Park Street. Park Avenue. On Park Avenue. Yep. Now I know they've got their parade right around August 4th, August 11th. Okay, yeah, we'll have to get in touch with Cecil. I, I know everyone was aware of it, but yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. We, I haven't heard that, so. I know the goal is to get it open before school started, but yeah, if we can avoid yeah, that. I, yeah, I, I'm sure you want to get that done before then, but I, let me see when their parade is. See, once they start, it shouldn't take but a few days. Yeah, it, it should only take a few days, luckily, but. Oh, definitely. 13th, the 13th, the, the 13th. Should be done by then if they're starting the first week in August. Yeah, the completion date's August 12th. Yeah, August 12th's completion date. Okay. I guess that would make them aware of it, you know. Yeah, uh, yep. yeah get it done then. Okay, we got the uh, item that we have to approve for the bridge replacement project. Do you have a motion on that or? I move approval. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Mr. Chair? Yes. If I may say something before these two gentlemen leave, um, <clears throat> this just, and, and I, I know we've said it before, and, and it applies to so many people within county government right now, but these two gentlemen helped again on this, uh, this last week. We uh, needed to start moving forward on bids for uh, the demolition of those two blocks up here. They, with Tim's help, have put together a very good bid package that they sent out this weekend, which you approved, but they've just done so much detailed work on it that it, it was just so nice. It's not a highway project, but yet we wanted to look for some internal expertise that, that uh, would work with contractors and things. So I guess I just want to make sure that you guys know that they have been, their work has just been really, really appreciated. And, and there's so many county employees that are doing that, from Joe to Justin to Julie to Tim, uh, just back and forth. So it's, it's just been really fantastic. And these guys really stepped forward. They wouldn't have had to do this. It, this is their busy season, but they've taken the time to do it. And I just really appreciate it. Well, I, I was going to mention too, Dave, uh, I want to thank you. I was up at you, I think it was last Monday night or Tuesday night, you know, on that bridge thing on the Agassiz sure. Trails. And, uh, talk to you about it the next day or Brian about it the next day and action right away on that day and thank you so much for working on that and appreciate it. I don't know what the final outcome but thank you for the quick action on that. Uh, one thing that I should mention, I know at our, 
Uh, in the past few years at our highway tracking committee meeting, we talked a little bit about change orders and things, and um, Brian thought maybe as things come along on projects, it would be good to keep the board updated a little bit. Uh, we had run into a little bit of an issue up on County Road 95. Uh, some of the soil in the very south mile had some drain tile that must have been plugged a little bit, and thus made the, the soil in there is extremely wet and not very usable. So what we did was uh, we were supposed to take out a foot of material for the new roadway, uh, but that material was actually better than the foot below that, so we took that foot out, set it aside, subcut the second foot, and hauled that away. Uh, the the change order, uh, it's kind of it's not completely figured out yet, but it potentially could be up to fifty thousand dollars. So I just wanted to let you know that project did come in about seven hundred thousand or so under our mm -hmm. estimate. Um, so we're we, we're running to one little snag, but I think as we switch that out, one we did get a good. Uh, a good road bed underneath there because we're gonna have to it's gonna have to sit for two years too besides um, so we, we definitely want to have a good road bed but I just want to update the board a little bit uh, we're looking at about a fifty thousand dollar change order so far so other than that everything is going good out there but so you think that's gonna sit for two years instead of the normal correct yeah more? in our, our normal procedures we would pave that in 2017 uh, but we need to generate a few more dollars uh, with our wheels tax and our county road uh, okay. levy allotment so we're gonna look at paving in 2018 all right, good. Thank you. Uh, actually, update. Yep, thanks. Thank you. Justin. Uh, uh, looking to approve the fill of full time female corrections officer yep. position. Yep. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, okay, Justin. Uh, late last week, we received notice from one of our full time female corrections officers that she's uh, accepted a position with Moorhead Police Department and will be uh, leaving us uh, starting the 11th. So looking to, to get that filled. Um, this is a, a DOC mandated position. It is part of the staffing plan. Um, Darren did provide a uh, cost savings analysis and looks like for the year it'll save us somewhere around $2,500. Move to approve, Mr. Chair. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Post motion passed. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Tim, fill position of planning, zoning, and solid waste. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I haven't done this in over 21 years, so uh, I'm here to request uh, to fill a position. Um, it's not listed exactly on the agenda as to what position that would be because we had some discussion as to whether to be an administrative assistant or whether we wanted to look down the road and, and possibly bring somebody in who had some, uh, some planning experience so we could groom them to take my position when I retire somewhere down the road. Um, but I think the, the way it's kind of worked out is uh, we'll be looking at hiring an administrative assistant for the time being. and. Uh, I would like the county board to approve that, please. Okay. I'd move approval. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank All you right. very much. Go ahead Thanks, with hiring them. With that, we'll go into funding for the schematic design for the law enforcement center. Now we're talking money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And if, if you don't have the memo in front of you, let me just breeze over it. It's a, it's a short memo, but uh, back, oh gosh, it's been a while back, I'd like to say a year, year and a half, the county board authorized the expenditure of up to $25,000 for a schematic design of the law enforcement center, and that was to be shared with the, with the city 50-50. And uh, we've gone through that schematic design. We've stayed within pretty much within the budget. But then we reached out to construction engineers and asked for a uh, estimate on the project costs. Um, it's coming in higher than what we wanted it to, expected it to. So now we have to do some value engineering and bring the costs and design, maybe make some changes in the design and different things to bring that cost down on that. And that's going to cost us a little more. We're gonna exceed the 25,000. So we've reached out to the, to the city for an expansion of their uh, allotment as well. And they will be doing that on the, I'm not sure when their next meeting is, the 17th of July. 
but I'm bringing it to you now for uh, approval to continue the schematic design and, and uh, financing estimates of the law enforcement center. Okay. That was discussed uh, at Finance Committee, right? Yes, it was. Yes. And I, I did put that in here that this was a recommendation of the Correctional Facility the Law Enforcement Center Finance Committee has recommended asking both governmental bodies to expand the needed funding. Yeah. Okay. Now, we were originally authorized 25000 Are we... If I'm reading this right, we're going to do another 25000 Up to another twenty five. Up to. I, I would have to say I don't believe it will take that because we're... We're right now in the in the value engineering. In other words, um, we may need to shrink some room sizes and maybe take out a function or along those lines, which doesn't cost the detail of of uh, the original schematic. So now you're you're chopping down and and uh, looking at the finishings and different things that we can do to save some money. And we're looking at trying to find a couple million dollars. To yeah, but. <laughs> two point two. So, yeah. Yeah. so um, that's that's significant. But you know, so this the, in, the investment is it's all part of you know, also trying to bring the cost down. So well, right. I mean, spending a little bit more money to try and get the cost down probably a good idea. Yeah. And, and and what I would tell you too is that uh, we will certainly, as we did with the with the jail contract or the correctional facility contract we will talk about these charges being applied towards that, mm -hmm. but we don't know. I can't sit here and guarantee that, So, uh, but we certainly will work towards that. So hopefully it's an investment, early investment, rather than a, a total expense of the project. Okay. Good. I would move approval of the request for the funding for the schematic design for the LEC. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, three to one passes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. But that will go on committee reports. Wayne, we'll start with you. No reports, Mr. Chair. Kevin? One second here. We just had. Uh, I just had one meeting last week, and it was a highway tracking meeting. And it, um, the meeting, the purpose of the meeting was to uh, go over again the um, uh, alternative fuel sources for the new building and the convert potential conversion of our gas at the uh, methane gas at the landfill. And so we've got uh, we had some concerns and some issues with the. Um, Preliminary numbers that were out there, they they didn't seem to, to add up. So, well, um, they added up. Well, they added up to be too much, <laughs> is what they added up to be. <laughs> so we're um, uh, we're going back to the drawing board on that. We're meet, as a matter of fact, we're meeting after today's meeting again to talk about it. So that's the only meeting I had. Okay, that it. Yes, that's all. I had. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Last week. Uh, we had a short notice meeting for the Felton Prairie. The uh, appraisal that this board has approved came back and we discussed what the, this board may or may not want to do uh, selling that. Uh, we did have a couple of issues uh, in regards to who would retain mineral rights if absolutely all of the resource aggregate wise would be uh, out of that area that's for sale because the county clearly has used that in the past. So we did uh, have a couple items go back to um, Overbo and Magnuson's department to look at further and then bring it back to us. I attended a retirement celebration for Claire from Lakeland Mental Health. He's given well over 30 years of, of service to that agency and will be retiring next month. And then last week I also had our first meeting of the Child Protective Placement Committee. It was a important meeting, as this board is well aware, that continues to be a problem plaguing this area. I think we have some great membership, and we talked a little bit about what the purpose and goals for the committee would be, uh, and then hopefully uh, talk about maybe down the future having a transition home uh, in Clay County to offset some costs, but that clearly has a lot of discussion to have happen. 
and we just kind of Frank and I had an update for us as to what everything entails in that area. Frank can grab anything that I may have missed, but that concludes my reports. Okay. Okay, Tuesday, the, the, we're going to have a PIC meeting, a personnel uh, uh, meeting. Uh, there we went over the Fair Labor Standards Act, uh, the different people, because they raised uh, the salary limits of people who are covered under the Fair Labor Standards Act rule. It's going to affect a few of our employees, so. Uh, we discussed that, uh, who's going to be affected, and now we have to proceed on that. Um, also, we had um, Tuesday afternoon, I went to Hawley for a Heartland Trail meeting, and they're uh, discussing some more about getting a, a route, and Bruce Albright from the watershed board was there, and he was talking about, well, along the river, the Buffalo River there, they have to put in a 50-foot buffer, and he was talking about well, what if we do the trail right along that 50-foot buffer, you know, right outside, so. Uh, but if we're gonna look into that, you know, the, the funding is not gonna be a, available yet. You'd have to add, in addition to the 50-foot buffer, you'd also add another 17 feet for the trail. So uh, that's all being looked at now, but uh, the money. Is, that, is the that money because nothing can be on the buffer? Is that why there has to be an additional 17 Nothing can be, because the pavement would definitely take away from what you right. call a buffer, you know. Right. It's just, okay. uh, so the buffer would have to be, I mean, the trail would have to be outside of the 50-foot buffer. So, and the funds aren't available for it yet anyway, but uh, it's just another thing of looking at uh, whether we want to go along that buffer strip. Um, Wednesday, we had, um, oh, oh yeah, I went to the Clar Claris uh, Prodi's uh, retirement too, and Carol Wickenheiser had a risk. She resigned after 17 years, didn't she? She had a retirement party or a resignation party, whatever you want to call it. Going away party uh, Wednesday afternoon or Tuesday afternoon. Wednesday afternoon, drug court 115. Again, that was very interesting to see another person that graduated from drug court, you know. And, and when I wasn't aware of that, we have our veterans court going on too already. I, and I sat through the veterans court after that, you know, and, and it's just, uh, it's, it's great what we're doing for our people. Now. Hopefully we can keep them out of the jails and stuff like that, you know. So we got drug court going on, we got veterans court going on, and uh, very good. And um, Wednesday night I went up to Ulan for their fire department. Uh, they said an open house up there, so I went up to that Thursday behavioral study, which Jenny has already covered there. But I guess we found out that you know. There's so many different groups in this behavioral study when we're talking about out-of-home placement. I think we're talking 172 children in out-of-home placement, you know, but there's so many facets of that. Why are they there? What, is it because of court order? Is it because of drug cases? Is it because of whatever, whatever the case may be? And then we found out now that sometimes the people that are disabled become involved in this program. So. I think the first thing we found out we go, that we got to get to find out first of all who's all in uh, this out of home replacement, and uh, Ron is going to get some of that uh, stuff together for our next meeting. Um, I think that's yeah, that's it for me. Thank you, Brian. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the PIC meeting has already been talked about, and uh, what. It, it, and the chair described that it's the rules for the exempt versus the non-exempt employee and um, we had quite a pretty good discussion in regards to it and we'll have further discussion um, if you're not familiar with this the the, uh, the federal regulations Department of Labor have come out with some new rules as to what is the amount the dollar amount a person earns before they're exempt or a non-exempt employee and it used to be just based on their job duties but what they were finding is that uh, a lot of employees that were uh, probably lower paid were considered exempt employees therefore not subject to the overtime rules and um, uh, now then they doubled the pay so right now it's like forty seven thousand some hot dollars before and and what Darren has put together is a 
a reference document on that and will come to the board after it goes to the pick meeting again for a recommendation. What we're feeling right now that it won't have a great deal of negative effect on the county as far as expenditures. In fact, there may be some very positive things in regards to it because um, right now when a, uh, and I'll use the example of a social worker um, has worked their 40 hours for the week, uh, it's tough to, tough to keep them working and then if they go out on a call, then we do exchange time on it and it might be very, then, and then Rhonda comes in and says, you know, that we're just, they're just far too busy and they don't have an, enough uh, people available because then they have to give those hours back. Whereas if you could turn around and they were a, now a non-exempt employee where we could pay them overtime for those hours so we could get them for 40 hours the next week too. It may help the workload rather than reduce it. It may cost us a little bit on the, on the overtime end, but it would probably save us money in the overall picture because by the time you get done hiring and training and, and benefited and all those kinds of things, you're spending an awful lot of money on some additional employees. So I feel pretty positive about that, that it's a positive move for the county and not a, not a negative. I know it may affect different entities differently, but I, I don't think it's going to be that damaging to us whatsoever. Um, the Felton Prairie, I, uh, that was alluded to as well, and I think the acreage, uh, Mr. Chair, for that Felton Prairie of 256 uh, acres was like $850 uh, mm -hmm. an acre for that, and the, the price was like $211,000 for 256 acres, and, and I don't think either of your, um, your board members that were represented at that meeting felt that that was uh, probably in the adequate arena. So we're doing some more checking. In yeah, I, I guess that. I forgot so. the report on that. Uh, Jenny had already reported on it, but I was at that meeting too. And since then I've become aware of a couple more sales that happened this spring that were double that amount. So uh, that weren't figured in on the appraisal. And mm -hmm. I would like some reconsideration of that project. So you'll probably be hearing more yeah. in regards to that in the future. <clears throat> I attended Carol's uh, going away thing too last week there for a few minutes. Um, we did have a pretty extensive meeting with uh, uh, the city um, engineer, our county engineers, and then also uh, the uh, Mike Love from Houston Engineering that's working on the reti water retention pond and the infrastructure and the demos for the for the uh, Eighth Avenue that we have to vacate. Um, I thought we made very, very good progress, very good communication between the groups, and, and Mike Love is going forward with a uh, good document to to uh, vacate that 8th Avenue for, for the fall, and also we'll be doing the shutoffs and things on uh, after the demo has taken place on the streets uh, up on 9th Avenue as well. So there's lots of pieces to, to, uh, to get done here that we want to get done this fall. So. We'll, we'll keep you posted on that. And like I told you, you approved the sending out the demo that was in Sunday's paper, according to Eric this morning. So that'll run its course, and then uh, we will uh, we'll get and, and one of the we'll get bids on it. And one of the other things that I think that's kind of important. There's some garages and sheds up there that that uh, people may want. And how we will plan to handle that is we're not going to go out and have a public auction because it's I don't know how you do that on these homes because we don't plan to auction any of the homes off is what we've talked about. But this would allow an avenue for someone to buy a garage or a shed or something through the demo uh, person. And, and then it keeps us out of the, the public auction and selling it and all those kinds of things. So it would keep it pretty clean if we What's will. What's going to happen if more than one people want a garage? Uh, then they go to this demo operator and, and offer to buy it. Doesn't it sell Competitive? Doesn't sound right. You you could have you could have five people wanting the same garage. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's publicly owned. Right. No, it's not publicly owned anymore. Once you approve the demo contractor, demo. now the demo contractor owns them. As they do the buildings. I think that's the way it was in the paper. I think. Yeah. Yeah. See, th that's where it's not it's not our property anymore, and that's why then we can so send those. So the demo those. contractor gets the money for the garages. Yeah, and he get the money for the garages. Yeah, that's usually how it works in okay. salvage operations and, and uh, things. So, 
it, it gives an avenue to, to sell some of those sheds if those people want them. You know, the demo contractor would probably auction them off, or if you come in and say, hey, I'll give you something more to that. So it does make it competitive somewhat. Um, okay, um, we talked about highway tracking, we haven't, that's already been discussed. Um, I stopped over the, to maintenance, they had a little meeting, lunch type thing uh, last week. Um, the behavior health, that's been talked about, I attended that as well. Um, and yes, it was a very interesting eye-opener to realize that it's not only the behavioral issues of the parent or the children where out-of-home placement takes place, but if there is a, a physical disability where the parents just cannot handle the situation as the person gets bigger or, or, or more violent or whatever it might be, maybe it's respite care that they have to have, but there's a lot of issues that go into that out-of-home placement that we sometimes don't think about, and it was, it was a, a good eye-opener. Um, had some personnel evaluations to handle that. Started the budget um, review process and putting the paperwork to that. I think I'm scheduled for next week to come in and give you some preliminary information on that. We just did today, I, I noticed in the MCIT magazine that uh, the dividend this year is going to be in the same arena. It's a little bit more than last year. I think it was $12.2 million or something this year, and last year it was 11 point something. And uh, they haven't sent it out yet, but if I do a, a calculation on that, which I did, it, it'll be maybe around $10,000 more than last year. So at least it's in the right direction rather than, than less. So that's okay. Um, a week or two ago, you had a presentation from Peter Lindstrom with that PACE organization, and um, you asked me to do a little follow-up on it. I did visit with Mr. Lindstrom, and um, I said, this sounds like it's an inviting opportunity for Clay County, but I said, I think the board would be more comfortable. You don't treat joint powers agreement, and that's what you'd have to sign with, with the uh, St. Paul Port of Authority is a joint powers agreement, and then you pass a resolution, and that's the authority to then have the special assessment district and different things along those lines. So I said the board is not real high on just signing joint powers agreement without having a, a uh, focus or a view down the road that this is needed. So I said I think they would be much more conducive to signing a joint powers agreement with you if you had some uh, customers or consumers out in Clay County that were interested in this program, or even if the, if the um, uh, economic development coordinators from Moorhead or, or say Karen Lauer from Barnesville or something that came to you and said this would be a good tool to have in, uh, available to them. So I, t you know, I said you probably have to do some marketing before you come back and, and ask for this to be done. So I hope that was with, with, uh, with what you had in mind. I uh, mentioned the publishing for the demo on the West Block. Um, we closed on another property last uh, Friday, and now that whole West Block is, is sewn up. It's just the two that didn't sell to us is the only one that we have not, that has not been vacated and we do not own. So, um, and then there's a, there's a few that we have purchase agreements on the East Block that are still being occupied. I say a few, I think there's, four, and three we have purchase agreements on, and one we're still dealing with. So um, we closed two last week. So it's, it's, uh, it's been constant. And to think that it was June 20th a year ago that we started, we dated that letter that was sent out, that's, um, that's amazing, I think. So, and with that, Mr. Chair, I think that's about concludes my report. Okay. Vicki, you got anything? Yeah. I think you've got the notice. We've got the August 4th meeting coming up with the cities at Dilworth Community yeah, Center at 6 o'clock. Okay. Now that, we're adjourned. <coughs>